On the way, Cedric and Paul with the call here to round out draft this morning at Pro Tour, Lord of the Rings. Thank you so much, Maria and Moni. Cedric Phillips, Paul Chion, we are here in the booth getting ready to bring you our third and final round of Limited, not just for the day. Unfortunately. But for the tournament. But we have a good one in store. Alexander Hain, Gabriel Nassif, Pro Tour champions at a minimum. They've done a lot of winning, but they have those titles on their resume. As Maria did mention, it is Haynes' birthday. And uh, we saw with Jake Beardsley, there's some birthday luck here in the room. Uh, it seems to be. I mean, uh, you know, Alex Hain making an incredible run here. Kind of a little off the radar a little bit. It's just like he was kind of hanging in on that second page, but now it looks like he just can't lose. Yeah, he's doing a very, very nice job in what looks to be a very nice deck in the draft portion. Sink be said here for Gabriel Nassif. This is kind of one of those spots here, Paul. You've played enough Pro Tours, you know that. You're playing against someone who's great. You have the potential to 3 the pod and walk out of here and say, hey, I'm, I'm well on my way to making top eight of another premier event. And the loss here stings quite a bit too. That third loss makes things pretty difficult. So a very high leverage match here to kick off our third round of coverage here in day two. Yeah, but both players uh, very familiar with this kind of situation. Yes, they've been in you know top eight contention for many different events, and uh, you know both, like you said, pro tour champions. So used to the spotlights. They've done okay for themselves. Hain, of course, winning Pro Tour Avicen Restored in 2012, and Nassif winning Pro Tour Kyoto in 2009. We begin the opening turns here with some simple lands, a little bit of land cycling here for Nassif in the first real play of the game. Yeah, mortar Muster here from Gabriel Nassif. Great, great two drop. Also a nice way to dodge um, potential counter that in Al Alex King could have had, but... Hain will play a copy of the Kingfisher and simply pass the turn back now. So we'll head back to Seif's way. You see blue-red on one side, blue-black on the other. These are kind of the, uh, the premier colors of this format, all in the same match. As there's a, the first of what could be two copies of Nazgul. Yeah, Nazgul, extremely, extremely powerful card. One of the best uncommons in the set here. Nassif looks to have a very, very great blue-black control deck going here. Mm -hmm. Deciding what he wants to tempt here, likely want to put it on the 1-1, a mass token here. If he can find another tempt effect, I mean, next turn could potentially be extremely, extremely powerful. Great hand here. Taking a look at Nassif's hand, you got to claim the precious. Uh, needs the Black Source for that, but taking a look at those four mana sagas, both Oath of the Grey Host and the Bath Bath Song. If you can run that Oath of the Grey Host out next turn, gonna be gonna be extremely powerful here. Yeah, that card is a real, real doozy. So you'll see Hain play a fourth land. And it'll be Knights of Dole Amoth. Four mana, three, three, pretty simple. You draw a second card each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Knights. Yeah has added value in this format because it is pretty easy to trigger that clause mm -hmm. due to uh, Tempt being a very prevalent mechanic in this format. Boy, is it. Arwen's gift, friendly rivalry of the cards left in Hain's hand. So a teamer strategy here for Hain, where you see a Demir one here for Nassif. Glorious Gale, the draw step here for Gab. And uh, dare I say that Gab is going to take a moment <laughs> before making a play. Yeah, I mean, a lot of different options here. You got the Glorious Gale. You also have the knot, so you can kind of take a turn off if you want. This, of course, this creature, of course, will go unblocked here, but probably going to weigh out which four drop he wants to play this turn. Both very, very valid options here. Now you mentioned that you're a lean towards the bath song here, perhaps. We'll see exactly which way Gab does lean this turn after that attack for one with that army token. Yeah, if he wants to find, if he wants to dig and look for that black source, could be the bath song but it looks like he's opting for the Oath of the Grey Host instead. Of course, that also gives you a Black Source. Chapter 2 gives you that treasure. It does indeed. So both players will be granted a food token. Chapter 2 will be coming once we head back over to Nassif's way. But for now, we turn our attention over to Hain for his fifth turn of the game. Did draw a forest to turn on that friendly rivalry. So a piece of the puzzle that he was missing previously, he does have now. Yeah, but... Also has Arwen's Gift, which would be kind of a better better use of his mana. Next turn, potentially set up a double spell turn with the cheap friendly rivalry with something else. 
But if you want to deal with the Nazgul and get a little more aggressive, I can uh, also see Hain considering just running out the friendly rivalry here. This is a bite effect, not a fight effect, so the death touch on Nazgul would not kill Hain's creature. You see that Nasif is going to take a look at friendly Double checking. Rivalry. Yeah, we'll do this. Is this a fight or a bite? Yeah, Let's look. We will do the same. Target creature you control and up to one other target legendary creature you control each deal damage equal to their power to target creature you don't control. So Hain will win that battle, and we're going to head back to Nassif's way. Chapter 2 is on the way, so a treasure will be created here for Nassif. Yeah, but Nassif has, Nassif has, you know, I know Hain's trying to get aggressive here, but Nassif has plenty of tools in hand to kind of weather that storm. Has, of course, to claim the Precious as a removal effect for the 3-3 three, three if he wants. Also can gain some life with the food, but again, at 12, doesn't have to worry about that. Nassif's draw step for the turn was a copy of Arwen's gift. Hain also has one in hand, of course. But Nassif is the one with all the spells and all the options. Could just go with the bath song here, probably, if you're considering the Arwen's gift. And it will just be kidding. a copy of the bath song. So, yeah. Next couple turns, I mean, those, the, the bath song is just an extremely impressive card. I mean, just if you just add up everything that this card does, it just gives you so much. I mean, you're talking about a saga for that for four mana, draws you four cards, allowing you to discard two, and then also gives you mana, yeah. right? So you kind of get a discount, it's just a little bit later. Yep. But then you think, wait, for two mana, this is what I get? Yep, but, and also, that two mana that you get a little bit later as well, you can use that on anything. Right, absolutely. Right? Lots, a lot of times you'll find a clause there where it can only be used on maybe a sorcery or an instant or something like that, and that is not the case in this instance. So if you can get to chapter number three with that card, that means you got the complete payoff with it, and with how the way this game is shaping up, that appears to be in play here for Nassif. Yeah. Nassif's going to come across here once again with that army and pass the turn back. So this okay. will be a very important turn here for Hain to draw a pretty good spell. In the yeah. meantime, Hain will sacrifice a Futo, can gain a little bit of life, we'll head back Alexander's way. So Hain will be able to get the five points of damage, and if he casts the Arwen's Gift, can get in for an additional point of damage, triggering the Knight. Looks like Quarrel's End was the draw yeah. step this turn for Hain. That is another way to find some cards. It's cheaper, so there's a higher chance you can double spell this turn while adding to the board. Mm -hmm. So it could be something that Hain considers here. Nope. Yeah, it looks like it will be Arwen's Gift. So a little scrying and then a little bit of drawing of cards here for Hain. So let's see where these top two cards are headed here, folks. Yeah, but Nassif is interested in the game going longer. You see those powerful sagas on Nassif's side on the battlefield. Next turn, you're going to see 311 tapped spirit tokens that enter the battlefield. And, of course, additional value gotten from the Bath Song. Hain splits the difference on the scry. One on top, one on bottom. Two cards come, and you'll see the counter placed there on the Knights. So Alexander found at least one card that he likes. He likes getting in the red zone, too. So he'll send with both of those blue creatures. And you see the draws there from... The Sorcery, Generous Ent, and Urkenbrand. So Haynes, okay. Haynes has got a little bit of power in it. It's got, the only unfortunate thing here is, sure, he was able to find some threats, but he wasn't able to add to the board. Yeah. And the longer this game goes, Nassif's going to be, likely be able to find the tools to stabilize here. Yeah, you would assume that's the case, right? When you got another Bath Song chapter resolving here and just building up all this small incremental card advantage, yeah. right, with these sagas, not to mention the birthday escape that has been drawn as well. So Nassif is going to make those flyers that are in the battlefield tapped. Just and now he'll land. Yeah, he'll draw a couple of cards there with the Bath Song second chapter. Now, yeah, can Nassif find a land here, I think, is the big question. I don't think he did. Yeah, it looks like Soothing of Smeagol yeah. and a Knights of his own were the yeah. draws. I mean, no shortage of interaction here. Black Breath would be a way to kill the Fisher if he wants. Has the Hithlane Knots as a way to kind of stall. And then, of course... The card that he's had in his since his opener, claim the precious. I mean, claiming claiming the precious on a four four seems pretty nice here. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about the Fisher next turn, right? Because you get to untap with those three tokens yep. that all fly. So that that is a card that you don't necessarily need to kill right away. Yeah, that card is mostly solved at this stage. Now, Nasif has finally selected the card that he's going to discard it looks from like the Bath Song. Looks like it was the Knights. Yep. OK. 
Okay. All right, let's celebrate uh, Nassif's birthday, not Haynes. Getting to the second ability here, which is big. Gets to potentially look at two cards this turn. The cantrip effect here from the birthday escape, along with the loot. Now there's your attack, and now there is your loot. Bitter downfall, too. Man. Look, this deck is very nice. No shortage of powerful cards, both in deck and in hand here for Gabrielle. There's the question is, as we have seen a couple of times in Limited so far this weekend, is Nassif able to convert these resources? And what I mean by that, of course, is casting these cards. Right. Hayne would love for the game to end with Nassif being stuck with a lot of these cards in hand. If Nassif's able to cast them, I think chances are high he's going to win this yeah, one. Definitely. And th this is a tough decision here. There's just so many good cards here in Nassif's hand. He's got to really figure out what's the card he's least likely to cast here over yep. the next two or three turns. Which one of these cards matters the least? And it looks like the redundant copy of Hithlane Knots was his decision. Nassif has found a land there in the swamp, so that's the land drop for the turn. And we and will turn our attention back to the match in just a moment there. It's a slight technical difficulty. Javier Dominguez, you're going to have to wait, buddy. Okay, we're going to get to you, Javi. We'll get to you. We promise. But while we do work on this slight technical difficulty, Paul, the texture of this game is shaping up to be a pretty good one. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, you really have to favor... Um, uh, Nassif's side there, right? I mean, he's got a hand just completely full of action, and Hain's kind of running out of gas there, right? And, and I mean, uh, Nassif also is just not too far away from getting to Chapter 4 there, so he's going to be able to quickly turn that around, put a Temptation on one of his the smaller creatures, and start dealing lots of damage while continuing to filter through his deck. Well, when we do have the opportunity to jump back into that match, if we do, we, of course, will do that. But for now, you're stuck with us here in the booth. Cedric Phillips, Paul Chion, Pro Tour Lord of the Rings here from Barcelona, Spain. We're in round number three of day number two as we're working ourselves towards a top eight here. You may have seen on that graphic right before we cut back to us that Simon Nielsen is 10-0. and 0. He is leading things and making it look really easy doing so, Paul. Yeah, and the incredible thing about it is I just got the chance to talk to him uh, the day before the event. Mm -hmm. And I was just asking him, hey, what's it like, right? You're already qualified for the World Championship. Yep. I mean, there's not, you know, what are, you, what are your thoughts kind of coming into this? He's, just, he's like, you know, it's nice for once that I don't have to worry about my result at this event. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I did some testing, but coming in, I just want to have fun and I want to relax. And uh, I guess that's when you're at your best because now he's 10 and 0, <laughs> right? Well, it is interesting, right? When you do play an event like this, if it's your first one or if it's your, if you've been fortunate enough for it to be your 20th one, you do kind of put some pressure on yourself Absolutely. to do well because you don't know if you're going to get to play in another one of these, right? Now, as you did mention, Simon has already qualified for Worlds off the back of a fantastic performance at Pro Tour March of the Machines last time we were out doing coverage of a high level event. Um, but he's making this look pretty. I don't want to say easy because it never is, but he's certainly comfortable in his own skin. And that energy that he always brings, it's still here once again. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, I mean, he's been on a pretty incredible run. Right? He has. He had the top eight this year. He top eighted a, a set championship last year as well, qualified for the world championship last year, and still has the opportunity to play this year. And then also has the opportunity to go back-to-back -to -back top eight here. Really great position here. Absolutely. Now, speaking of great positioning, we are back to our match. Thanks for bearing with us on the technical difficulty. Gabriel Nassif on the top, Alexander Hain on the, uh, the bottom. Nassif is in a position right now that is not commanding because you do see the life total 6 to 16 in Hain's favor, but he is looking to play catch up. And if he can hold out just a little bit longer, it will likely become a commanding position. Hain trying to make that difficult. Draw step here for the turn for Alexander, the bath song. Yeah, got the bath song here, but Hain wants something to try to close the door here uh, on Nassif. I mean, Nassif's going to be able to untap and just have the entire world at his disposal with bath song going to chapter three, giving him extra mana to cast multiple spells in one turn. And here is the bath song to kick off the turn. So draw two and discard one is, of course, chapter one and two. We'll get to that little extra mana bit in just a moment when we head back to Nassif's way. For now, we're curious exactly what Hain will be discarding and how he wants to move forward with the turn. A lot to think about because of so much going on on Nassif's side of the battlefield. So going to discard the Urken Brand. Yeah, the Urken Brand is long gone now. Hain will make the land drop for the turn. Looks like a Spearmaster, and this is an attack for three, mm -hmm. but this is likely the last attack that you'll <laughs> see from the Kingfisher for a while. I think so. Ooh, it think ac so. just actually not even going to be able to attack. Gabriel Nassif valuing the life total here, making sure he stays at six, also potentially up to nine 
with that food token in play because right now, I mean, Nassif's got to be feeling like he's in a pretty commanding position here now. Yeah. He's just got to make it through the next couple of turns alive to be able to, again, use all of these cards that are in hand, which are pretty good. You see him on the left-hand side of the screen. The Soothing of Smeagol, the Bitter Downfall, the Black Breath, a Glorious Gale, Shelob's Ambush, and a draw step coming. Yeah. Now we're on Chapter 3 of the Bath Song. Chapter 3, 2 mana. And also gets to shuffle all the best cards in his graveyard back into his deck. So look at that. Get the, get the, get the, uh, the claim the Precious. Get the Lorien Revealed. So... Okay. Man, if that's not value, I don't know what is. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is fantastic. I mean, all of a sudden, you've just increased the density of action in your deck here. You saw Hayne review those cards a little bit there briefly. Hope maybe dodge some of those moving forward. Sagas are the name of the game so far in this match. Nassif has resolved two all the way through. Hain working through a bath song and perhaps a there and back again soon enough. Yeah, and so no permanence that Nassif can play this turn. Has two blue mana sitting around. Can choose to cast the black breath here. Get the Kingfisher off the battlefield and not irrelevant, very important actually, getting to that fourth ability of the ring. Indeed. This now turns these, uh, the, one, the ring bearer into basic, effectively a four power creature. Yeah. Now, this turn at least, you have to keep in mind though that the Spearmaster is a one power creature because the Black Breath was cast. So, Hain does have the ability to block this spirit this turn. Nassif, at least one spell played this turn. He's starting to get now into multiple spells per turn territory. We saw with the back-to-back -back saga turns, spending a lot of mana to get those established. He's through both of those, of course, now. And so now he can play multiple spells and really start to take a hold of this game, it looks like. Yeah. There is the block. Oh, and did not block. Oh, yep. She loves ambush, too. Yeah, this is, this is rough now. Hain with no board. Nassif at a virtual 12 life with two food in play, mm -hmm. and the aggressor. Nassif will play a swamp. Will there be a follow-up, or is that about it? That's going to be it for right now. So Hain's going to need a little bit of help. He's going to draw a card and trigger chapter two here on the bath song. So that, of course, means he'll draw two more cards and discard one. So can Alexander find anything to catch him up in this situation? So the generous scent does a good job. It's got reach, right? So it does a good job of keeping two of the spirits at bay, but of course cannot block the ring bearer. And at the moment, Hain does not have an answer. He's already down to 11. With that ring bearer, that's going to potentially get him down to seven next turn. He does have the best card in his deck in his hand in there and back again. But right now, it's a little too slow. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's going to be time here from Je to... Uh to discard a card and draw a couple more. So Hain, with that Quarrel's End, must be looking for something in particular. Probably want to find a way to kill that ring bearer. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it was just double mountain there for Hain. Yeah, and given that probably is just going to cast the Darren back again, as can't really, seems to be the best option. Urkenbrand doesn't really matter as all of Nassif's relevant creatures have flying at the moment. Well, Gab wants to take a look. Gab, we're going to do it right along with you. Chapter 1 is up to one target creature can't block for as long as you control there and back again. The ring tempts Hain. So, up to... Well, he's got a lot of catching up to do on the ring, does Hain? But there is the first, the first level on the ring, and it is doing a little bit of tempting here on that token. So I kind of have a, a wish list of what I want to do with there and back again. Okay. Easy enough to win with a 6-6 six, six mug, right? That's generally right. not That's, too tough. Yeah. But what I want to see happen one time, at some point, and maybe I'll just keep drafting until I get to do it, is, okay. get, is get a Mirkwood Bats in play, okay. sack my dragon, and kill him that way. Mm. Come on. Oh, with all those trends. I'd love a screenshot. Right. I'd love a screenshot That's if a somebody lot. got to pull Ooh, that off. buddy. That's a lot of clout on the social medias. <laughs> That's what I'll tell you. You're going to be huge on X. Yeah, that would be great. Just huge. Let's turn our attention back over to Gav now. Council's deliberation was the draw for the turn. You see the attack here with a handful of flyers and that army. Yeah, I mean, this is 
Nassif getting in for three in the air or six, right? Once that connects. Mm -hmm. All right. And there is a deceive the messenger. Yeah. Yep. And now Nassif, Nassif is just kind of snowballing here, just pushing his advantage. Yeah. And he's got basically all his bases covered, right? Yeah. You have the Gloria scale you, and the bitter downfall here in yep. hand. <laughs> Ooh. Now, Hane Straw was cast, cast into, the, into fire. the fire. That is not bad, right? Because that allows you to kill two flyers. Mm -hmm. And Hane's going to search up the mountain, of course with there and back again. So Nassif just wants to familiarize right. himself with that saga. Now, now it's Bath Song time. Now Nassif does have the ability to cast Soothing of Smeagol to get a tempt counter or tempt uh, one of the other tokens in play. But right now, there are no targets for the bounce spell. Everything is a token. Mm -hmm. So... Bath Song is completed. It'll head to the graveyard. Now that Chapter 3 has been read. All right. Hayne has found the cards he wants to shuffle in. He'll shuffle and present over to see here in just a moment and continue with his first main phase of this very crucial turn. And you see the hands here for both players on the left. Can Hayne catch back up here? He tried racing in the beginning, Paul. Did not work out great. It did not. Yeah, and it's kind of funny. If, if Hayne runs out Urkenbrand, I think Nassif might just be interested in letting it resolve? No, I don't think you care about that because you're winning with your flyers anyways, right? And that's just, that's just a ground creature. It doesn't right, really it's matter a ground creature. Much. And now if Hain does have a, an answer to the ring bearer, you can bounce the Urken brand and put the tempt on the remaining flyer. Well, Nassif is going to solve that problem oh, okay. pretty quickly. You tempt the ring, right? Yeah. Um, there is a glorious scale. Oh, counter target, okay. counter target creature spell. If it's legendary, you get the, you get the tempt. Which Nassif technically can do. Did, did Hain play a land this turn? Uh, he searched for a land. He did with there and back for a again. Land. But I do not believe he's played a land yet this turn. Now, here's the generous int. Generous int. Yeah. That's going to resolve very quickly. Yeah. Okay, so that gives you a food. And, and now there's your land, land for the turn. All right. And this gives Hain two options, of course. He can sacrifice the food to gain some life. Or perhaps bluff a spell otherwise. You're going to see okay. now here from Nassif. And I think Nassif wants to go for the bitter downfall here just to get that extra damage in mm -hmm. on top of that. So that'll put Hain down to three. Can potentially go up to six with the food. But I don't think that... I, I, oh, if you go for the soothing here... If you go for the soothing, it's not lethal because Hain can go cast into the fire. Mm -hmm. Kill, kill, t the, kill two spirits and go down to two? Yeah, and this is the other card that Hain had access to, of course, right? He does have this cast in the fire. You mentioned this ability to kill these flyers. That's exactly what's going to happen here. There is no ring tempting anything, so Hain's going to fall down. It looks and, like to two. But, but it does go down to two, and the Seif does have bitter downfall mm -hmm. for Smog. Yep. Nassif may do a little birthday escape right now. You do see Bitter Downfall here. To start target creature, its controller loses two life. But when Hain untaps, he does have a food available to him. Yep. So that puts him up to five, Cedric, with the smog that comes into play next turn. So let's go to chapter three of there and back again after Hain does draw a card All for All right. Turn. Got to be careful when you crack this food. It's true. Right? It is true. If, if Hain just fires off the crack, of course, Nassif can respond with the downfall for the game. Smog is on the battlefield. It's a 6-6 six, six red dragon creature with flying haste, and whenever it dies, all those treasure tokens. Nassif oh. shaking his head, because if he had he gone for the bitter downfall, he would have already been winning this game. Uh, here's a generous end from Hain. That is another food token. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now here's an attack oh, for six. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, maybe uh, an attack for can't six. Can't block the flyer. It's true. Can bitter downfall the flyer. How do you feel about this attack, Paul? Hain's going for the win here. He doesn't have a real great answer to the 1-1 the flyer, right? Because that's going to get in. That's a guaranteed four points of damage. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Looks like Nassif's going to take that and Nassif's fall down to six. It. Probably going to go for the end here, end of turn. Hain's going to respond by sacrificing a food, right? Go up to five, then go down to three, then he can go up to six, and that's two, three, four, five, six. So I think Hain is just dead here. It is looking to be lethal. Yeah. So you're <laughs> interesting. So you're, so you're dead. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He already did the math. He knew he was dead. Yep. He knows yeah. that he is dead. So Gabriel Steve's gonna win game number one here over Alexander Hain. As now we turn our attention to game number two between two of Magic's absolute best. And I'm gonna start things off here and receive a mountain for Alexander Hain. It'll be an island and simply passing the turn back over to Nassif, who's got a pretty good hand once again, Paul. Yep, it's almost the exact same hand. We have a turn two muster into a Nazgul into an Oath of the Grey Host. Yeah. Looks like Lauren Revealed is going to be land cycled away. So an island will be headed to Hain's hand. You see Hain does have a Storm of Saruman. I have never played that card. I am really curious how it plays out in Alex's deck. Well, you do see the enchantment here, six mana, ward three. Rarely do you see a weird enchantment that has a ward like this. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, copy it, except the copy isn't legendary. You can choose new targets for the copy. And a grindy affair like what we saw in game one, this could be a game breaker. Uh, it could be, it could be. Hain will simply pass the turn back. Now, friendly rivalry in hand doesn't have the green mana just yet to cast it. Just something to keep our eyes on if it does show up. Nassif just considering a potential counter spell here, but this is just, he doesn't really have anything else great to do, and it's just such a great curve here for Nassif. Yeah, it's not a bad start at all here for Gab. Nazgul now, three mana, one, two with Death Touch, tempting, and a whole bunch more. What a, what a card this right. one is. And Hayden has a really awkward hand here. Just has no place for until turn five, right? Yeah, that's just had, really what it just looks can't like. can't do anything here. Right. I mean, you have a club with no permanence. You have a rivalry with no creatures or forests. His first play is a turn five Darren back again. It's not the most exciting of plays right now here for Hain. A little bit of organization of mana and just going to pass the turn back. So the oh. reason you see that, I think, is a little bit of gamesmanship yeah, by Hain. absolutely. Reaching, it's... thinking, passing. You got to make you think I have something, so maybe you play around it. Yeah, it may seem minor because we know that he doesn't, but it could be major here for Nassif on this his fourth turn of the game. Right. All right, so but he's going to take this Nassif, three. You just, I think you just jam here. Just play the four drop. Next turn, you have Nazgul plus Glorious Gale up. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to resolve. So both right. players will get a food token. Curious if Hain wants to sacrifice his right away or not. Probably. Nothing better to do, right? Unless he has... Oh, no, he does have an improvised club. Yeah. So he can use the club, sack the food, and kill the Nazgul. Oh, wow. Okay, so... Okay, the there you of, go. The Oath of the Grey Host <laughs> ends up being... Boom. Uh, a little bit worse for Steve, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, wait. Than expected. That was not ideal. So, not a bad swing there for Hain. He'll draw a card now. And, and you know, given Hain's life total here, sitting at 16, no better time right now to play the Saga. Not underneath right. all that much pressure. Yeah, Darren back again. And uh, maybe we might see the Storm. It is possible. It's the Storm of Saruman. Enchantments were kind of the name of the game in the first game, and you're seeing it here once again. Yeah, there's not that much pressure just yet. And next turn, you do get a mountain from Chapter 2 mm -hmm. of Darren back again. Oh, man, I want to see this card go off really badly. <laughs> we might have that take place here, partner. And Nassif is drawn a troll from the Black Land Cycler, of course, alongside his other copy of Nazgul and a Glorious Gale. So there's an island for the turn. Yep. I imagine he's just going to go Nazgul into Glorious Gale. Get the loot. Step, oh, one's, the, step okay. one's the easy part. It looks like it's just going to be an attack here for one, and now there oh, is the troll course, sacrifice the treasure. The treasure. Yes, yep. the treasure, of course. So the troll is not a bad one here. We're going to see chapter two here if they're in back again. Going to search up for the mountain. Die will take up to two. So there is just, the mountain. Just slam it, Alex. Well, we know what Paul wants Alex to do. <laughs> we know what everybody watching <laughs> wants Alex to do, Cedric. Well, the question is, can Alex afford to do this right now? By tapping out for Storm of Saruman, and it's going to take a pretty big hit to the face, too. I mean, so Now, maybe Alexander's hand doesn't present any better options, of course, but... We'll go with that. We'll go with that okay. and then just have him play it. Okay, got it. Got All it. right. 
This is, is this your version of hardcasting Shark Typhoon? Uh, well, th there is no other mode here. That's also so true. So you just got to. That's also you true. You just have to. Well, if you there have you to. Go. There you there go. There you go, Alex. There's the storm of Saruman. We, Let's get it done. We are going to see Nassif read this one. We've already oh, read yeah. it to you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to need to read it a couple of more times because I have not actually seen this card in action. Well, for four blue blue, ward three. That one's going to stay on the battlefield for a real long time. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, copy it, except the new copy isn't legendary. You can choose new targets, of course. The question is, can Hain actually actually do anything with that. Can you play two spells in a turn? Yes. Right now, with a forest, he could, or with a, with a, a land. Yes. Right? So, you, and the, the way that you want to do it is, of course, play your better spell second. Yes. With the Storm of Saruman in play. Here is Nazgul. That's okay. going to have the ring do some tempting once again. Up to level two with that ring, too. This is, this is a lot of damage coming through, though. And don't forget, Chapter 3 for that Oath also went off, so 3-1-1 Flyers were also added to the battlefield here for Nassif. Right, and he's going to be able to get in for 7 this turn. Putting Hain down to 5, so Hain needs an explosive turn. Of course, we know that at the very minimum, he's going to have a 6-6 six, six Dragon token in play. But going to need to put multiple creatures in play to be able to block that troll. Well, Hain's going to take that one right on the chin. So a big Boparuski is going to bring Hain down to five. He's going to untap those six lands, take a draw, and I can't wait to see what it's going to be. <laughs> Let's resolve Chapter 3 first. There's the big yep. flyer. And Nassif's going to read that uh, gonna again. Read that again one more time. Oh, I guarantee you he's going to read it again in a couple of seconds mm -hmm. here. Now, is there anything of consequence that Alexander can do this turn? That's the big question for Well, us. he did draw a two-drop, so he can go Goldberry into... A creature. Perhaps a Kingfisher or a Knights of Dol Amroth. But I don't know that it's going to be enough here with everything that Nassif has on his side of the battlefield. Well, Hain says let's get the party All right. started. It is going to be a, go. a gold berry. Remember, three creatures do need to go in front of the troll for Hain to survive. Mm -hmm. So that also limits the number of blockers for all the other creatures. That is correct. Nazgul is a two-power creature. You block that one, and you take four from the rest if Hain's able to play. Another card here. And Asif does have that Glorious Gale in hand, too. Might right. Be, might be thinking, am I supposed to counter this one? Uh, What's the next yeah, one? Yeah, I imagine he's going to, but remember, it's a trigger that goes on the stack. Correct. So one would still resolve. So if he does go for the Glorious Gale here, you have to block the troll, and you take six from the rest of the creatures. Yeah. It looks like this may end up being it. So if Nassif does play a Glorious Gale, which it looks like he's yep. going to. It's like, what can you do for the one red? Yep. And Nassif? <laughs> hey, a third time doesn't hurt. Look, in your situation, you keep reading. when you're in a situation like this, this is why... He is a Hall of Famer. This right. is why he is the Pro Tour Kyoto champion, among many other accomplishments on the resume, is because he wants to make sure of himself in this spot. Yeah, this is a huge, huge spot. Right. And that is going to do it. <laughs> Gabriel Nassif is going to win this game and match over Alexander Hain. Two games to zero. A very, very, very good Demir deck there for Nassif leads him to 9-2. and two. Yeah, fantastic start, and, you know, we almost got the chance to see Hain kind of do the thing, but I think he kept the hand that really just didn't have enough action in the early game, and, and Nassif was just able to overpower him at the end. He was. It was a very good back and forth between two of Magic's very, very best, but at the end of the day, it is Yellow Hat on to 9-2, and two, heading back into the modern portion with a deck he likes quite a bit in Living End. We're taking a break here from Barcelona, but it doesn't mean there isn't more action to come. Quite the opposite, in fact. Simon Nielsen, our lone undefeated player, first place, top of the standings, going up against Martin Dominguez right after this short break.
Welcome back to beautiful Barcelona, Spain. Cedric Phillips, Paul Chion, Pro Tour, The Lord of the Rings. We are in the front end of day number two of competition. Putting a wrap on our limited rounds here. As you see, many a Magic player enjoying what has been one heck of a convention this weekend, Paul. Yeah, yeah. I... I am trying my best to kind of, on my off rounds, to kind of go out there and see what's going on here. It just looks so exciting, so many people. It's, uh, it's, it's really incredible to just be a part of all of this. We are excited to be here in Spain, excited to be crowning a Pro Tour champion here soon enough. But in order to get there, we gotta start here and close out round number three of day number two of our limited portion. Simon Nielsen is the name of the game here this weekend. Mr. Checklist Card has not lost a single match. Martin Dominguez is looking to put a cramp in Nielsen's style. Now, to Martin Dominguez's credit, has only lost one. Yeah, and I mean, Martin Dominguez with a fantastic Rakdos deck the best color combination. If there is an archetype that could potentially take Simon down, this might be the one. Well, Simon Nielsen is a green-black deck. Now, we did have the opportunity to see Nielsen's deck in the last round against Christian Calcano. Now, if we go back even further, we saw Kai Bude at the beginning of the day draft a green-black deck. Not a very good one. Simon's the direct opposite. It Quite is good. incredible. It is basically a strictly better version of Kai's deck, including... Orcish Bowmasters, yes. which Simon has in his deck, along with removal spells, mm -hmm. along with more bombs yep. in his deck. So Nielsen has an ideal green-black strategy, Dominguez, in the color combination I think everybody wants to be in, if they can, right. in red-black. Something has got to give. You'll see that Nielsen is already up a game, he is our lone undefeated player here in Barcelona. Dominguez is just going to play a swamp and pass the turn back. Speaking of... All right. The Bowmasters. No, no creature to pick off here, but still, this just puts a good amount of pressure. Martin down to 18, facing three damage here. And this is not a bad start. Here come the beatdowns. In for three, Dominguez. Looks like going to fall down to... I think oh, we might have a slant. Yeah, they've got a slight life total discrepancy, so there we go. Down to 15. Yep. These players will communicate and figure it out. A forest and a follow-up, maybe? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't afford to. I mean, this is so much power on the battlefield here. Mirror, Mirror Guardian. When it dies, the ring will do some tempting. And Martin, with a bit of a clunky start here, nothing until turn four. Not where you want to be. Well, if Martin's going to turn this around, it's got to start here as far as getting something deployed on the battlefield. The question is, what's it going to be? Perhaps a foray of orcs, but... I, I see a couple of five drops in hand. He has the powerful Aomir in hand, but can't play that this turn. So, yeah, really action light hand here for Martin. He's going to have to use this to kill a, a Bowmasters, which, sure. Yeah, but you're still facing six damage next turn. You are breaking the fellowship. Does a little bit of tempting and solves a minor problem, but not the major one, which is, of course, that 4 2. So Nielsen is going to serve on in here for six points of damage. Gonna bring Martin down to nine. And now there's your follow-up. So just this is just creature, creature, creature. This is one, right. two, three, four. Yep. One, two, three, four. That's gets the scry. Maybe try to find the five. Oh. But yeah. now Martin Dominguez does have a five drop in hand. And he might just need to run it and just cross his fingers and just hope that Simon doesn't have a way to basically get that creature out of the way and attack for everything. Well, here is a five drop. Okay, so Finally, a little bit of stabilization, I mean, or at least an attempt. Does Simon have a removal spell here? I mean, it's going to be so hard to come back. I know if you kill the War Beast, it will amass two. It does do It'll that. still leave a 2-2 two -two in the wake of everything, but still. And to Martin's credit, if a 2-2 two -two army is left, it's actually pretty good right now. Right. So... So that's a goth mock. So now that 2-2 has death touch and just attacking with the team. Yep, send them. Push your advantage. That's four, seven, five, six, seven. So Martin's going to fall down to two if this is the block right now. Yeah, almost want to block the 4-2. You still will have a 2-2 left over. That will allow Simon to tempt, though. But it would only be on the first ability. Yeah. 
Yeah, back against the wall. This is tough, a uh, tough situation here for Martin Dominguez. Yeah, that's interesting, right? Because this format is a little bit of a slower one, so rarely do you see games like this that don't involve a red-white deck of kind of just being run down. But Simon Nielsen just went one drop, two drop, uh, excuse me, best two drop, <laughs> three yeah, drop, four, four one drop, drop, best two drop, yeah. three drop, four drop. Three drop, four drop, but it's just really giving Martin Dominguez the business here. Yeah, uh, not sure if Martin already mulliganed this game, but that hand seemed a bit sketchy to keep. Yeah. So Martin's got a little bit, and I say a little, I should change it to a lot of bit to think about with this block. What is exactly do things look like here? So let's say this 4-2 gets blocked. Then Martin Dominguez would be left with an amass token. Next turn, plays Naomir. Would have two blockers, down to three life. Mm -hmm. Simon has an attack with everything. Okay, going down to two here instead. But now if you're, if you're going down to two and you just play a creature, Simon simply needs to attack with everything, and two creatures get through. Yep, and that would make things very so easy. Martin needs a way to deal with two creatures or play two creatures to stay alive. Well, Martin's drawn his card for the turn. Now it's time to analyze this battlefield. Is there a way to get things shored up? Yeah. This is a double spell turn that is needed here for Martin Dominguez, or perhaps uh, a, a card like Fear Fire Foes, right? Cast it, kill a thing. Remove a one-one so that you could potentially stay alive. Yeah, it may take. Some, it may require something that powerful in order to get back into. I this do one. see a smite the deathless in hand, so that would kill a creature. But a smite the deathless alone is still not enough. Yeah, right? if it can be smite plus a creature, smite plus a creature would be okay. But I think that was a Sam's rescue mission. There's no creatures in the graveyard. Excuse me, Sam's desperate rescue. Does he have something else along with the smite? I don't know that he does. Did he need to block the 4-2? Yeah, blocking the 4-2s there instead of the 3-4. You do see armor of the Rittermark, yeah, what which is, I mean, that's an incredibly, incredibly powerful uncommon, but just not in this situation. Right. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what that last card he has in hand. Okay, he's just passing. Just hoping, basically. Well, Simon, I hope you don't attack with all your creatures to go 11-0. Simon will draw, picked up a swamp, already has a swamp, so that might actually, what that may mean, drawing a land that turn, already having one, is my options are limited, oh. and they are limited, and that is going to do it. Simon Nielsen is going to win this game and match two games to zero. Our undefeated player is still undefeated. Unbelievable run here for Nielsen off of the last tournament that we saw him in, Pro Tour March of the Machine, and now this tournament, our lone undefeated player, 11 and 0. Yeah, 11 and 0, and of course the magic number for this tournament is 13. So he is now two wins away from securing a slot into the top eight of this event. And maybe most important at all for you limited fans out there, Black Ring got a 3-0. It did the it impossible. It did, it did. It put one on the board. That's right. There were zero black green decks from yesterday that went 3-0. So finally, Simon Nielsen getting one done for the Golgari color combination. Well, it is time for a break here from Barcelona. Our limited portion is all done. Modern is coming up next. Our leaderboard update, deck text, and a whole bunch more from our friends at the news desk. Do enjoy.